Okay, let's solve this particular question. This question is taken from YX 2015, number 12. This is a theory question. Let me read it so that we can go through it together. The question says, a water reservoir in the form of a cone mounted on a hemispherical mounted on a hemisphere is built such that the face, the plane face of the hemisphere fits exactly to the base of the cone and the height of the cone is six times the radius of its base. It says we should illustrate this in a diagram and if the volume of the reservoir is 333 whole number 1 over 3 pi meter cube. It says we should calculate correct the nearest whole number volume of the hemisphere total surface area of the reservoir. Okay, let's study it together. The question is talking about the reservoir and this reservoir have the form of a cone. And not just the form of a cone, the cone is mounted on top of a hemisphere. And the way it is being the way it's been done is done in such a way that the plain face of the hemisphere, you can see the face of the hemisphere fits exactly to the base of the cone. And the height of the cone is six times that of the radius. Okay, so let me demonstrate this so that you can understand it very well. So that you get what this place is talking about. Cone mounted on hemisphere and face of cone fit exactly fit face of hemisphere fits exactly to base of cone. Yeah? Okay, so this is a cone. You can view it very well. You can see that the base of the cone, you can see it a circular base, you can see the curved surface. I use red color to differentiate it from the base. Okay. So if I have a hemisphere, let me bring in the hemisphere so that you can see it. You can see the hemisphere. Okay, let me separate it so that you understand what the question is talking about. You can see the way I just separated it. So what this question is talking about is the reservoir. Let me show you the question again. The water reservoir is in the form of a cone mounted on a hemisphere. So, and it's, it's built in such a way that the plain face of the hemisphere fits exactly to the base of the cone. So, the plain face of the hemisphere, you can see it, it fits exactly to the base of the cone in this way. You can see. So the cone and the hemisphere, they fit exactly and they lap together. So this is how the shape looks like. So when you get this idea of the question, you will not have issues when it comes to solving it. So all they are trying to say is you have the cone and you have the hemisphere. They fit exactly and this kind of shape is being formed. Okay, now that you understand what... The question is talking about let's see what they want us to do in this part of the question the question says illustrate this information in a diagram and you know you can't demonstrate it in your exam question paper using the way i just showed you with the software so if you want to illustrate this in a diagram you need something like this so this is like your normal notebook so this is how your answer sheet will look like your YEC solution and paper your script so all you just need to do you get your ruler you make a sketch something like this we reduce the thickness okay this one is okay let me use this just get a sketch like this then you Rotate it the other way around. Remember, they wanted to illustrate it using the diagram. Then you have this. I'm just trying to form the cone. Have something like this. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me rotate this a little. Okay. I think this is okay. 
So after drawing this on your answer sheet, then after drawing this, then you need your compass. Take your compass. Take your compass and you make a curve like this. Add something like this. Okay. Okay. Something like this. They just want to see a sketch that looks exactly the way the question illustrated. Something like this. So this is the cone I'm trying to sketch. Then the hemisphere you can sketch it down like this. Something like this. You can see the cone, this is the cone, and this is the hemisphere. Just make it neat in your answer sheet. Then you label the height. Height is like this. This is the height and this is the radius. So this is the radius, then this is the height. Yes. Remember the question says the height of the cone is six times the radius of its base. So if the height is six times the radius, if this height is 6 times the radius, that means h is equal to 6r. That means this height here is going to be 6r. Yeah, so this is what they want to see in your answer sheet as a. So just put it to question a. So this is the a question. Just give them a sketch like this. Make sure you label the height. At 6R, they want to see it, which is 6 times the radius. So you have this, you have the sketch. So this is the A part of the equation. Now let's go and complete the question. So the B part says, if the volume of the reservoir is 333 whole number, 1 over 3 pi. So we should calculate to the nearest whole number, the volume of the hemisphere and total surface area of the reservoir. So how do we do that? So the reservoir, remember, the reservoir is combination of cone and hemisphere. So the volume of the reservoir is going to be like this, which is um, volume. So if I use this as volume of reservoir, volume of reservoir is equals to volume of volume of hemisphere volume of hemisphere plus volume of cone so this is the formula we are going to use to solve this question and the volume of the reservoir is given if the volume of the reservoir is this which is 33 number 1 over 3 let me convert it to a mixed number which is 33 3 times 333, which is 999. Then we add it to the numerator 1, which is 1000 over 3 pi. 1000 over 3 pi equal to volume of hemisphere, which is 2 over 3 pi r cube plus volume of cone which is 1 over 3 pi r square h okay you can see it so converting this to a to an improper fraction it gave us 1000 over 3 pi 
then this volume of m is fair 2 over 3 pi r squared plus volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r square h but according to the question it says the height of the cone is 6 times the radius of its base which is what we illustrated in the diagram from here you can see it the height is 6 times the radius so height is 6r radius is r so let's use it to solve this now which is say but but h but h is equal to 6r so if h is equal to 6r we are going to get 1000 over 3 1000 over 3 pi 1000 over 3 pi is equal to 2 over 3 pi r cube plus 1 over 3 1 over 3 pi r square times r square times h which is 6 r k consists to now replace h with r ok let's move on so the next step is we have 1000 over 3 1000 over 3 pi is equals to 2 over 3 pi 2 over 3 ok 2 over 3 pi r cube plus 1 over 3 1 over 3 pi r okay let's see this place 3 can go into 6 so 6 can go into 3 so 6 divided by 3 is 2 so I don't even need this 1 over here so I'll have 2 pi you understand what I did 6 divided by 3 is 2 like this 2 pi is this pi the r squared times r is going to give us r raised to power 3 so take note of this step okay and screw up you can see it clearly 6 divided by 3 2 pi r squared times r is pi r cube okay now we can see that 3 is the common denominator here yeah? so let's clear off this fraction so that this equation will be easy for us to solve so we, how do we do that let's multiply by 3 so let's multiply let's multiply each each term by 3 so let's multiply each term by 3 we are going to have 3 times 1000 over 3 pi 1000 over 3 pi equal to 2 over 3 pi r raised to power 3 3 pi r raised to power 3 um, plus okay we are multiplying by 3 I need to multiply 3 here yeah? which is 3 times 2 over 3 and here yeah, also 3 times 2 pi r raised to power 3 Okay. Okay. I think it's clear now. Multiply it, you can see 3 times 1000 over 3 pi equals to 3 times 2 over 3 pi r cube plus 3 times 2 pi r square r cube. Okay, so we are doing this. Okay, this 3, 3 is multiplying, not 2. Okay, 3 times this. We are doing this so that we can clear off this fraction. And we are going to get so 3 divided by 3 is to give us 1000. 3 divided by 3 is 1, leaving this 1000 alone. So 1000 pi then equals to 
3 divided by 3 to leave left on to leave us with 2 which is 2 pi 2 pi r raised to power 3 plus then 3 times 2 will give us 6 pi 6 pi r raised to power 3 okay okay now let's see now these two terms are like terms we can easily add them 6 plus 2 give us 8 so this is 1000 1000 pi is equals to 8 pi r raised to power 3 okay then now let's divide both sides by 8 pi divide both sides by 8 pi so that r will be left alone so divide both sides divide both sides by 8 8 pi okay you are going to get going to get 1000 pi divided by 8 pi is equals to 8 pi r raised to power 3 divided by 8 pi okay you can see it clearly so when you divide it will cancel it pi will cancel pi something like this it's pi will cancel pi it will cancel it pi will cancel pi <laughs> it is one it into one thousand is going to give us let's see let me use my calculator screen to do it one thousand divided by eight which is one twenty five so we are getting one hundred and twenty five is equals to r raised to power 3. So now how do we get the value of r? So we need to cube root both sides. So if we cube root we cube root both sides we find the cube root of both sides cube root both sides we are going to get going to get going to have cube root 125 don't forget to put the 3 here cube root 125 is equals to r then finally let's solve it here so that we can see it the cube root of 125 can use your calculator and do it is giving us five so therefore therefore r so therefore r so therefore therefore r is equals to five centimeter so this is the radius the radius is five centimeter let's see what the question wants us to calculate the question says we should calculate the nearest whole number the volume of the hemisphere okay now that we know the radius as five the volume of the hemisphere will be easy for us to calculate so all we just need to do is volume okay all we need to do is volume of hemisphere volume of hemisphere volume of hemisphere is equals to you can see the formula 2 over 3 which is 2 over 3 pi 2 over 3 pi r raised to power 3 so this is the volume of the hemisphere so with this we can get our answer very fast.
Okay, let me just move on. So volume of M is fair. If you substitute the value of R, we say R is 5, we'll be going to get 2, 2 over 3 pi times R, which is 5 raised to power, 5 raised to power 3. Yes. Then, without wasting time, pi is is to be we are supposed to use 22 over 7 as pi the question said it that take pi as 22 over 7 so let me just replace this pi as 22 over 7 so we are having 2 over 3 times 22 over 7 so that is it then we can now get our final answer now so what do we do volume volume of hemisphere what volume of hemisphere will now be equals to so let's see 2 times 22 we are having 44 44 okay we're having 44 over 21 this is 7 times 3 is 21 then times so 5 raised to the power 3 is going to give us 125 then finally, let me just simplify this and let's get the final answer. 44 over 21 times 125 is 261.90. So, final answer is volume of hemisphere. Volume of hemisphere is equal to two hundred and sixty one point nine zero five centimeter. Okay, two hundred and sixty one point nine zero five centimeter cube. So, this is the volume of the hemisphere. So, this is the I question, don't forget, this is the I question, like this one, volume of the hemisphere, it is, but the question says we should leave the, our answer, so we should leave our answer correct to nearest whole number, so let me approximate this to whole number, so this one is going to be finally, we are going to get the volume as, finally the volume of hemisphere volume of hemisphere is going to be equal to to give us 262 the whole number 262 centimeter cube so this is the volume of the hemisphere you can see it clearly so take note of this Okay, now we have found the volume of the hemisphere as 262. The next part of the question says we should find the total surface area of the reservoir. So how do we get the total surface area of the reservoir? Remember, the total surface area of the reservoir is those places that we can see in the reservoir. For example, let me show you that demonstration I did. For example, this is the reservoir. You can see the curved surface of this cone. Can also see the curve surface of the hemisphere so those are the total surface area we are going to find you cannot see the base of the cone the circular base and you cannot see the top of the hemisphere which is circular top you can see as i highlight it you are seeing the circle but you cannot see it in real life so you cannot find area of the circular base of cone and area of the top of the the circular top of the hemisphere instead we just find this curve surface and that is all that's what we are going to do. Just like this, you can see the curve surface of the cone and the curve surface of the hemisphere. So those are the two formulas we need to get our answer. Okay, so now total surface area of the reservoir will give us. So let me use ST as total surface. So total surface. 
So let me take ST as the total surface area. So total surface area of reservoir of reservoir is going to be is going to be let me use SC as curved surface. Let me take SC as curved surface it's going to be curved surface of of hemisphere curved surface of hemisphere plus SC as curved surface again curved surface of cool. So this is the formula we need for the second question. Remember this is the second question. I I will forget that. So this is the formula we are going to use. The curved surface of the the total surface area of the reservoir is going to be curved surface of hemisphere plus curved surface of cool. And let's go straight to it. Let's not waste time in solving this one. So So I have a total surface area of reservoir is going to give us okay let me position it well it's going to give us so curve surface area of hemisphere is two pi is two pi r square then plus curve surface area of cone is pi Pi R L. So that is it. But this L, L is not given in the equation, but we can calculate it. Let me show you. Since we know that the height is 6R and the radius is R, and now we have calculated our R as 5. So take note if R is 5, that means this is 5. Remember this shape. This angle here is 90 degrees because this is vertical height, while this horizontal length here. The radius is horizontal, while the height is vertical. So the angle they make is 90 degrees. So we can get L. This is L. So this is the L in that pi R L. So with Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate for L. Since the since radius is five, so this place is five. So the radius is five why the height is 5 times 6 this height is, is going to be 10 so take note of this so that you don't miss it so this height is 30 then this radius is 5 so using Pythagoras theorem we can get our L so all we need to do now is using Pythagoras using Pythagoras rule I'm going to get so L is the hypotenuse you can see it L is the hypotenuse where 90 degrees is facing so L is hypotenuse which is L which is L square is equals to the sum of the radius plus sum of radius square plus sum of height square so which is 5 square plus 30 square that's what we are going to do which is 5 square plus 30 plus 30 square okay so take note of this Okay. okay, now we we'll move on to so L. So L square. So L square is going to be equal to so 5 square is going to give us 25, 30 square is going to give us 900. So we get our L. Now our L square is 
equals to 25 plus 900 which is 925 then we need to find the square root of this we'll scroll up so we need to get the square root so we find square root of 925 so L L is equals to square root 925 so let me check it here square root 925 equals to 30.414 so L L is equals to 30.414 centimeter so that is slant height so now that slant height is gotten we can con conclude our it's total surface area of reservoir just to substitute and we solve and get our answer and that is the end of the solution so we say therefore total area of the reservoir now is now going to be two cut it it's now going to be two pi okay let me substitute directly it's now going to be pi is 22 over 7 it's now going to be two 2 times 22 over 7 times radius is 5 which is 5 square okay plus pi 22 over 7 times radius is 5 times 5 times the value of L the slant height which is 10 30.414 centimeter. So take note of this. So all we just did is to substitute. All we just did is to substitute the values into the total surface area of the reservoir. So you solve and get your answer. So let me just go straight and finish it up. This is two times. 2 times 22 over 7 times 5 squared is 25, which is 157.8. Okay, so it's going to be 157. I just did this one directly, I just solved everything with my calculator. You can see it here. Which is 157.143. Then you add it to this one. Let me do this one directly. Okay, I don't need this centimeter again. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me do it directly here. Yeah? Which is 22 over 7. 22 over 7 times 5 times 30.414. So this is 477, 477. Okay. Let me remove this. This is 477.934. Okay. okay, let me scroll up so that we can see it well. And now we add these two, and that will give us our total surface area of the reservoir, which is 157.143 plus 477.934, which is 635. This is equal to 635.077. Okay, this is, we need to put it in mass mode. 635.077 centimeter square. Okay.
Let me shift it to this side so that you can see it clearly. Okay, so this is the answer. But the question says we should leave our answer in correct to let's see, see, calculate correct to the nearest whole number. So we need to put the answer in whole number. So our final answer is now going to be. It's now going to be total surface area of reservoir. It's now going to be 635. 635 centimeter square. So that is it. This is the solution of the question 2015. 2015 number 12 theory question. You can see the way we did it directly, starting from explanation of how the cone is mounted on the hemisphere. You can see it. To both of them added together we give the volume of the reservoir. With this solution, we went down and got our radius at 5 cm. Then after getting the radius, we now use it to calculate for the volume of the hemisphere, which is 2 over 3 pi r cube. The radius is 5. So just substitute and solve. You get your answer. And that is that. Let me take this out of here. You don't need it. So you can see that is the answer 262. Then for the total surface area of the reservoir, all you need to do is add the curve surface area of hemisphere plus curve surface area of cone. Because those are the areas you can see. You cannot see the circular base of the cone and the circular top of the hemisphere. So when you add the two formulas, curve surface area and substitute very well, you will get this answer. Just follow the steps the way I did it. And you see that it's not difficult. All right, thank you very much for listening to this. Let's move to another question.